Our next speaker is Cameron Hansarinia. Cameron is a policy director of National Union for Democracy in Iran, a nonpartisan nonprofit organization of Iranian Americans supporting the movement for secular democracy and human rights in Iran. He heads research and writing advocate, advocacy efforts in the policy and policymaking communities, media relations, legislative efforts, and special projects for NUFI and maintains contact with the Iranian American community and Iranian democracy activists across the political spectrum. Prior to joining NUFI, he worked at BlackRock after graduating from Harvard, where he studied government and was student body vice president. So Cameron, since the United States and Canada are neighboring countries, how does designation of the IRGC as a terrorist entity by Canada will maintain the national safety and security of both countries? Time is yours, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah, and thank you also, uh, Your Honor, for, for your time today. Um, I appreciate you allowing uh, even us Americans uh, to participate uh, in today's conversation. Um, <clears throat> as uh, my friend and colleague Kaveh alluded to, um, this is uh, not only not a partisan issue, but it should not be uh, a national issue in the sense that it really should be a, a North American uh, or a Western uh, democratic nation uh, uh, issue, uh, if you will. Um, before I get into that, I just want to make one brief comment um, on uh, on Mr. Genesis' uh, remarks and, and say how much I appreciate um, the reference you make to uh, to the discussion of values. I, I find it uh, one that uh, those on um, uh, the so-called left, and, and as Sarah said, we are a nonpartisan organization. We look to work with people ac across um, all aisles. Um, but the, the comment of values is very often uh, made. And, and I actually think, um, and, and the notion that we can't enforce, quote unquote, our values on others, our American values, our Canadian values, our Western values, and I actually find it a very uh, regressive thing to say, um, as a matter of fact, because uh, the values of life and the values of liberty uh, are really universal values. They do not belong only to Americans or only to Canadians. And so uh, your comment, uh, sir, about that was, was most appreciated. And I think something that we have to highlight more and more uh, that the Iranian people um, and the people of, of, of other oppressed uh, nations have those very same rights. And so we, we certainly appreciate uh, you standing up for those. Um, to, to the question uh, specifically, um, obviously, uh, as Kave mentioned, uh, our two countries, the United States and Canada, uh, have a long uh, and storied history. Uh, we are uh, among uh, the closest allies uh, of each other. Um, and uh, for that reason, uh, in addition to the obviously uh, long contiguous border that we share, uh, our national security interests are um, inextricably tied uh, to one another. Uh, and so threats that are posed to Canada are naturally threats that are also posed to the United States and vice versa. Uh, and so the fact that um, the IRGC, uh, as a result of not yet having been listed as a terrorist entity, has, uh, to Kaveh's point, uh, been able to mm, make more in inroads, be it financially or through uh, their agents or other individuals who have made their way to Canada, it poses a significant national security threat uh, for the United States. And, and one that I would argue um, uh, can, uh, down the road, if not properly addressed, uh, cause problems between the critical alliance uh, between our two countries. Um, uh, now, uh, the, the, the point of, of national security is quite obvious when it comes to the IRGC, um, whether it's the, the brutal uh, murder uh, of uh, the 176 passengers above uh, on a flight at PS752, um, and I offer my uh, personal um, condolences to the families of, of those who are here, um, and it's really a, a, a personal um, uh, that, you know, it's an honor to, to stand next to you, um, but uh, it's, uh, I'm sorry that I have to do so and that I have to call you the families of, of the victims of that flight and, uh, and I salute all the courage that each of you has shown. Um, uh, in addition to crimes like that and clear national security crimes, clear terrorist activities like the blowing up of a passenger airline, um, there are uh, smaller and perhaps less clear um, threats that the IRGC poses um, both to Canada 
and to the United States uh, and to, to the United States as a result of Canada's uh, refusal uh, yet um, to list it as a terrorist organization. Um, the, foreign, the foreign influence operation of the Islamic Republic is, is particularly uh, what I'm referring to and uh, the agents that it sends abroad um, be they in the form of, of, of undercover operatives, secret operatives, if you will, sort of the things you'll see in the movies, collecting intelligence, collecting information, or those that they send uh, in the cover of, uh, uh, of journalists, of, of academics, um, who uh, perhaps are doing, uh, do have some journalistic duties, some academic duties, but their agenda is to promote uh, the Islamic Republic's agenda. And until which time, uh, the IRGC is formally listed as a terrorist entity in Canada. Um, I'm not an attorney, uh, but I can I can simply say from a um, political perspective and from a logistical perspective, it's much more difficult to assess the impact of the IRGC's influence operation when it's not taken as a threat uh, and it's not formally listed as a terrorist entity. Um, but the activities that they are taking uh, are... Uh, without a doubt, uh, terroristic ac activities. They are posing significant threats to Canadian citizens, uh, as you mentioned, sir. Um, uh, the people on this call, uh, I know, uh, be they the victims of Flight 752 uh, or others, uh, have been the subjects of, of serious threats, uh, threats to their lives, threats of character assassination, uh, physical assassination uh, by the IRGC and elements uh, which have found their way into Canada or use Canada as a base of operation. Um, and that also poses a threat to those of us in the United States. Um, I, I unfortunately have spoken to many friends and colleagues here in the United States who have similarly uh, faced threats, um, threats on their lives, threats on the lives of their families uh, by the IRGC. Um, and uh, again, COVID talked about the, the spree of, of executions that the Islamic Republic carried out in its early years. We had former prime ministers who were assassinated, former leading generals, members of our royal family, uh, leading opposition activists of a variety of political stripes, all physically eliminated across uh, Europe and also in the United States. We had here in Washington, uh, a former member uh, of the uh, embassy who was a political activist assassinated right here in Washington. Um, and we're seeing uh, those threats continue to grow. And as long as the IRGC is not designated as a terrorist uh, entity, uh, that threat will, will, will continue. And, and in my view, it will expand until we properly put a microscope on this problem. Uh, Canadians and, and as a result, Americans uh, will unfortunately uh, continue to be at risk. Um, so, sir, I most appreciate your leadership on this issue, and I hope that you'll be able to pass on some of this information uh, to your colleagues. Um, especially those who, as yet, regrettably, have been unwilling to support this. Uh, and uh, Sara, thank you uh, for your time and for organizing this. Thank you so much, Mr. Cameron Hansarinya, Policy Director of the National Union for Democracy in Iran.